Welcome to MAT 2LB booklet number one, rounding and converting lesson number five, place value and rounding with money. So demonstrating our knowledge of place value and rounding accurately while using money allows us to be smarter and more effective consumers. So let's start with a review just quickly of place values. Now we're gonna try not to use the information graphic from two lessons ago. We're gonna see if we've just got this in our heads. So if you'd like, you can pause the video here for a brief second Go back, review the infographic from lesson number three, and then come forward, and we're going to start at example number one. Okay, so hopefully you've gone back, had a look, or at the very least, we're feeling confident enough to try this quiz without review. Let's have a look at example number one. Circle the name of the correct place value in the un of the underlined digit. So let's start with A. So here we have 25, and the 5 is what we've got underlined here. So although we don't see it, there is actually a decimal place right here. Now this is an assumption that we can make any time that we read a number without a decimal place, we can safely assume that there is a decimal place to the right of the last digit that we see. So I went ahead and did the same thing for example, or um, question letter B, 145. I've put the decimal place in. For C and D, the decimal place was already there for us. So let's scooch back up to A. We've got 25 and then our decimal place. So the place value that's underlined is one to the left of our decimal. And if you are reviewing, that is not tens, it is ones or units. So that is our first example. So now, hopefully you've got a good idea as to whether or not you're prepared at this point. Try B, C, and D on your own. If you need to review, now's the time, a second opportunity to do it. Hit pause, try B, C, and D, and when you're ready, come on back. Okay, so hopefully you've gone ahead with B, C, and D. Let's take a look. We are rounding 145 to the place value two spaces to the left of our decimal point. That is not hundreds, that is tens. Let's take a look at C. We've got 12.65, and the 5 is what's underlined. The 5 is two decimal places to the right, or sorry, it's two place values to the right of our decimal place. That is not tens or tenths, but hundredths. Last but not least, we have 6.40, place value here, 1 to the right of our decimal place. That is not tens but tenths. The next thing we're going to review before we move on is the two different ways that we learned to write money. One of them is with the notation with the dollars or for the dollar sign. The second is with cents or with the cent sign. That's the C with the vertical line through it. So in example two, we've been asked to write each of the following amounts of money in two different ways. So the two ways that we're looking for, of course, are dollars and cents. So let's just tally up quickly what we have here in A. We've got, that's one dollar that we have there. This is a nickel, and that is worth 0 0.05 dollars. And lastly, we have a dime, which is worth 0 0.10, or 10 cents. So to tally this up, the first way that we can write this is with dollars. We have one dollar plus five cents plus ten cents is one dollar and fifteen cents. Or we are also given an opportunity to write this in cents. Now again, this is review. How do we change from dollars to cents? If we are heading in this direction and we are going from dollars to cents, we are going to buy, be multiplying by 100. So if I take 1.15 and multiply it by 100, I get 115 cents. If I were going in the other direction, if I were going from cents to dollars, I would be dividing by 100. So at this point, I'd like you to hit pause and try B on your own. Again, we're writing it in two different ways. Tally up how much you have, then write it as both dollars and cents. When that's done, come on back and we'll take a look. Okay. You've tried to be. Let's just quickly tally up what we've got. And this time we'll start it with cents. Let's do it in cents. So this is one quarter, which is 25 cents. 
a second quarter, which is also 25 cents, and a third quarter, which is also 25 cents. So in terms of cents, what we have, three quarters, which gives us 75 cents. Now the second notation we want to get to is the dollar notation. How many dollars is that? If we are going to go from cents to dollars, we are going to be dividing by 100, and that will give us 75 divided by 100, or 0 0.75 dollars. And that's how we write our two different forms of money, cents and dollars. Lastly, we're going to look at estimation as an extension of our ability to round. Sometimes when you're out purchasing things, and we're going to look at this more as we move into this unit, um, it's nice to keep a sum, a running tally in your mind of the things that you've gathered together. So you have a rough idea about how much things are going to cost once you've got your entire bill gathered together. We're going to do this by rounding each amount to the nearest dollar and then estimating the total by adding those up. Let's start with ice cream. Ice cream here is labeled as having a price of $3.97, and we are asked to round to the nearest dollar. So here's our dollar place value, one to the left of the decimal. We look to the value one to the right of where we are, or after the place we'd like to round. We've got a nine, which means that we are going to round our three up. So our total here is going to be $4. And again, everything after that, place where we are rounding, we don't need to write down. So four will suffice here. Let's have you guys work on crackers and juice. When you've got crackers and juice rounded, come on back. Right now, hit pause, do crackers and juice, and then come on back. We'll see how you did. Okay, you're back. Let's take a look at crackers and juice. So crackers, we've got our still rounding it to dollars. So there's our dollar place value. We go to the digit after the one we want to round, which is a four. 4 does not round up, which means that we are going to round down or keep that 1 the same. So we have rounded $1.47 to $1. This is just for the purposes of estimating. Juice is $2.29. Rounding to the nearest dollar, there's our place value. 1 to the right or after our place value is a 2. That will also not round up, so we are going to round down or keep that value the same. It's going to be 2. How do we estimate our total? We simply add these three together. We're going to add these to try to estimate our total. So we have $4, $1 is $5, and another two will be a $7 estimate of your bill so far with ice cream, crackers, and juice. Again, this is just a quick way to do some approximating. If you have any questions, go back, listen to portions of this lesson again. If you're feeling good about it, head off and take a crack at the worksheet, and I'll see you in lesson number six.